Welcome back for week two of the BBR. This week we're facing CB Marcus and his Rose City Roselias. If you don't know Marcus, he actually takes care of a lot of stuff around the draft league scene. He's working for a bunch of different leagues and a bunch of different people at the same time. I'm mostly on like automation and stuff like that. So go and show him some love after this video. Go and hit the link in the description and go and check out Marcus's side of the battle. This week, in addition to the battle, we'll have a team builder portion of the video. You guys can of course skip that and go straight to the battle if you want to. The timestamp is in the description and it should be on your playlist head as well. With that said, let's check out the matchup and see what Mons were bringing to the battle this week. So here we have it. As you can see, Marcus actually has two really good answers to our Spectreer. So unfortunately, Spectreer won't be making an appearance again this week. If you're wondering what the two answers are, they're Roaring Moon, of course, with booster energy, I'd need an agility up to actually outspeed that. And Draining Kiss doesn't even kill unless I'm like plus two. And there is a Porygon. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, Porygon's, it's a basic Pokemon. It's not even evolved. <laughs> How good could it be? Well, it acts a lot like Porygon too in this case. It's a little bit worse, but it definitely still deals with Spectrier and that it can run Foul Play and Shadow Ball to cover basically any set of Spectrier. You can't really taunt it because all it's going to be doing is attacking. And if you think it's weak, it's not. It's base 85 special attack and it has analytic boosted attacks coming your way. So for those reasons, we are not bringing Spectrier this week, but we are bringing the Mon you see right below me, Primarina. Now this is kind of my hard stop to the two dragons, both Roaring Moon and Garchomp are very strong into us, and I have two answers. Primarina isn't the only answer to the dragons, of course, because if it had to deal with both, it definitely could not. We do have Draining Kiss and Moonblast on here, this allows us to take on even a booster attack Roaring Moon, and we have Surf and Calm Mind, this allows us to take on pretty much the rest of the team, outside of like Palmot and Superior, because those two outspeed us, of course. Now you might be wondering, What's up with the speed? You actually can't see the speed right now, but I will tell you that the speed is 23 IVs and uh, it hits 148. And this is actually really hard to gen uh, because the gener bots automatically give you a 31 IV in speed. And I had to figure out a way to get one of them to give me a 23 IV in speed. Now, why am I going for 23 speed IVs? Well, one, I still want to be faster than Azumarill if it's running no speed, but I also want to underspeed Porygon if it's running just neutral nature, zero speed EVs, but 31 IVs. Reason being, analytic. If I can be slower than the Porygon, it can't hit me as hard, and I'm second to get off attacks, which means Draining Kiss is going to be healing me after he attacks me, uh, which is honestly usually going to be better uh, on a uh, Calm Mindset. And of course, you see we're 48 EVs in Special Attack with a Modest Nature, but most of the rest is divvied into the defensive stat, enough to be able to deal with the Roaring Moon after rocks, even if it is Booster Attack. And finally, of course, the item Rocky Helmet is going to allow us to dish out damage in case the Roaring Moon is like just a basic U-turn set and just being used for momentum. Can also help into the Azu, of course. Azumarill is something that I'm quite scared of. It could be Belly Drum, it can be Assault Vest, and it can be Choice Band, and all three sets are super scary. So just having a Rocky Helmet on the team, I think is going to help in general. Our next mod on the team is going to be Yuxi, Unforgettable, with Foul Play, Reflect, Thunder Wave, and U-turn. This is gonna be more so the Garchomp check than Primarina is. Foul Play allows us to really punish Swords Dance sets. Reflect allows us to eat up hits from a non-Swords Dance set if it's just like Life Orb with Scale Shot. Uh, it also helps the rest of the team deal with the physical attackers, mainly Garchomp and Azu, but also Moon. And Thunder Wave is really easily spammable across the team, if not for Garchomp and Palmot. Neither of which, well, Palmot can tear it into an electric type, right? So then it doesn't want to take foul plays. And nothing else on the team other than that and Garchomp will want to really take foul plays. I doubt the Fortress comes to this game. Uh, and the Moon can come in on foul plays, but I get U-turns off. Reflect goes up in front of Azumarill and it can get paralyzed by Thunder Wave, etc., etc. And we're just rocking absolute max defense. Normally, I don't spread my EVs out this way, but I think for this week, it's absolutely called for. Next up is Unluck the Salamence, which did not do anything last week, unfortunately, just got off a couple of Rocky Helmet chip hits. But this week, we're looking to make it sweep. It's got a lot of HP with a little bit of defense and spit F. This is because we are rocking the Reflect, of course, that you saw on Yuxi. Dual Wing Beat, Dragon Claw, and Rock Slide is just good across the team. Rock Slide, of course, is for the Moltres because we do not want to make contact with it. I considered Earthquake on the set, but I do think the Dragon Claw and Dual Wing Beat are both very necessary. And of course, we are a Moxie set. And we're rocking Heavy Duty Boots because it's actually quite easy for Marcus to get up rocks, whether that be with the Garchomp on the lead, the Mew, or even the Fortress, honestly, could definitely come. And it's kind of a hard stop to this set because we're not rocking Temper Flare or anything like that or Flamethrower. But uh, Wing Beat is like so free into Marcus's team. It's actually insane. Uh, I get up a free DD and it's pretty much curtains with the, with the Moxie 
efficiency boosts, uh, and we're still 196 adamant. We're just not rocking a lot of speed because we don't really need it at plus one. I'm just faster than Moon, I believe. So that's really all we need for this set. And yeah, this thing can definitely uh, put in a shift. Our next mod on the team is the Wincon, or one of the Wincons. I guess if Salamence is one of them, then the Scrafty is the other side of the coin. Last week, both of those mods ran Intimidate. This week, they're both rocking different abilities. Salamence with Moxie, and Scrafty in this case with Shed Skin. Why my Shed Skin? Because I have Rest as a last move, as you see. Knock Off and Terra Blast with Terra Fairy plus Bulk Up with this spread, pretty much behind a reflect goes unchecked. Nothing can really stop it. He really needs like a strong breaker on the special side, which if you look at Marcus's team, that doesn't exist. Superior is the closest thing you're gonna get. You could argue Mew, but Mew normally with its stab can't hit Scrafty. And if I tear a fairy in front of a Dazzling Gleam and go for a knockoff, it's like pretty much dead unless it's Colber. So like there's, there's not too much stopping Scrafty. If I can just eliminate the Superior, basically this thing goes on a rampage. The Moltres can't even hit it super effectively after I Terra. And it's it just, it's non-stop, right? And all the status coming from Marcus's team as well. As you can see, there's like will wisp from the Moltres, there's Glare, there's Thunder Wave uh, from the Superior and the Slow King respectively. There's also Thunder Wave on Mew and all kinds of status, right? And even the Porygon, right? If it comes as we're predicting it to come, then Scrafty kind of covers it all, right? It's kind of the massive uh, status absorber on the team, both between Rest and Shed Skin can just sit on the status mons. And we've got a mixed defensive set, like I just mentioned. We have a lot of defense because Bandit Azu is very scary. Uh, and the Spideff, we don't need as much of because once again, Marcus's special breakers are pretty much non-existent. I'm really hoping a Scrafty can put in a shift this week because uh, although we got two kills last week, I think I made it look worse than it otherwise should have. Next on the team is our lead Iron Shreds with Pasho Berry. Now, I really wrestled with a lot of different item choices here. Uh, I thought about Sash. I thought about a lot of different things. But Earthquake, Ice Spinner, Rapid Spin, and Stealth Rock with the Pasho Berry, I think is the best way to cover the Garchomp and the Azumarill lead. Azumarill is, is really not a bad lead into me at all. It can just click Play Rough or Liquidation if it wants to. This Mon can live Banded Liquidation and by proxy, it can also live Belly Drummed Aqua Jet uh, on lead. So I pretty much always get a hit off on the Azumarill no matter what, uh, unless he is non-choiced, non-Belly Drum goes for Liquidation into Aqua Jet. If you're lead Azu though, I can't really see that. I don't see that play making a lot of sense. But of course, Treads also covers lead Garchomp with Ice Spinner. And I think it's bulky enough to take a non-life orb Earthquake as well from Garchomp, if I'm not mistaken. So it can get off Brox and then get off a spin. I think it even lives Earthquake into a rough skin, if I'm not mistaken as well. Or I can go for an Earthquake or I can go for an Ice Spinner, right? If he doesn't go for, if he goes for Swords Dance, I can Ice Spinner him and then just revenge him with something else like the Primarina or the Yuxi. Or I can go for uh, Earthquake if I'm too low if he has like an adamant nature or whatever then i don't need to make contact necessarily so yeah there's, uh, there's a lot of options with this thing as a lead and i think it covers his team relatively well the one lead i'm scared of into treads is actually superior and that's why the last one on the team is going to be our cinderace yes cinderace is coming again and we have an extra belt this time why extra belt because i need it to two shot the moltres if it's fully defensive which if moltres comes that's the only reason it's there <laughs> so extra belt is pretty good otherwise into the team like it, it nukes the superior from full, whereas normally Serp would live. So that's really nice. Will-O-Wisp is really spammable. Uh, he doesn't have much for it. It's really just the Moltres. Everything else getting burned really doesn't appreciate it. And uh, Swords Dance is on the set, of course. We are Blaze. I do want to specify that. And we're rocking max attack, max speed. Normally, my EVs do not look like this. Like I mentioned earlier, normally they're, they're more spread out. But uh, in this case, there is a Roaring Moon, and I want to be able to speed tie it at the very least if it's not rocking booster speed. So that's why we went for max speed. Uh, I'm not playing games with that thing. It can definitely come with max speed into my team if it wants to uh, so I, I don't want to play games blaze uh, I do need to explain I don't want to change my typing uh, at any point because if it is scarfed superior I want to stay a fire type I do not want to turn into a normal I do not I definitely don't want to turn into a rock type so uh, I think that blaze is the better ability here and pyro ball getting boosted into the late game looks really good if the azu is down for example and there's no moltres and if the garchomp is weakened right pretty much nukes everything else so all right well that's the team I won't keep you guys any longer let's head right into the game all right here we are guys week two of the BBR We're taking on CB Marcus and I think Marcus is already waiting. I'm gonna try not to choke my Scrafty away. And I uh, gotta be very careful about Azu. There's Roaring Moon as well. Can't let my Primarina get too low. All right, there's a Serp there and a Mew. 
Serp lead's a little bit annoying, but I do have uh, I do have Ace. Got 40 seconds. Let's change the Mons on the bottom. Okay, cool. Let's go. It's time. All right. Hopefully the uh, the Elgato uh, capture audio isn't too high. I can always fix it in post, realistically. But all right. So we see Mew lead. Cool. Let's go. Treads lead. We have spin as an option. So I can honestly just click Stealth Rocks here. Just get him up. I don't need this thing that much. Honestly, looking at his team, it's not that necessary. He could like start Calm Minding, I guess. Ghost for Scald, I am Pasho, funny enough. Does he burn me? Nope, okay. So I could just click Earthquake. Uh, there's a lot of different things I can do. Scrafty is really good here, like really good. Pomot is fighting or electric as it's Terra. I don't really want to switch out and I took, let's actually see, so I took uh, 321 down to 209, 113. Gonna find out some information about this Mew right away. That is partially offensive Mew, actually. It's actually pretty offensive. Whoa, this thing's like max special attack. I'm just gonna go for Earthquake, just to damage him. Rapid Spin will de deny hazards. So I'm probably dead here, I am. But we got a lot of damage off. Let's actually see where the Mew is real quick. I can't see where the Mew is, great. God, I love this game. <laughs> All right, it's probably like, Assault Vest, if I had to guess. Honestly, it's probably like Scald, Ice Beam, Dazzling Gleam, Volt Switch. He could also be Colber, I guess. I could also just go Primarina and Calm Mind. Let me go to Yuxi and U-Turn. This thing has no recovery and I wanna see what it is. I wanna see what, what kind of coverage it's got. So we're gonna go to Unforgettable without an E. Unfortunately, it doesn't gen with an E. Not enough character slots. <laughs> so uh, let's just go for U-Turn. I can see that his Mew's not very, uh, not very defensive. I don't know why he taunted when I already went for rocks. I'm just getting off a slow U-turn here. That's not gonna do much at all. Uh, and he is what, weakness policy? Okay. So it's it's just weakness policy. Just wanna see how much Cinderace does to this. 44, it's definitely at 44, right? So we just hit a Pyro Ball and we're good. That seems fine. We'll go Ace. So Taunt, Scald, Weakness Policy. Okay, so that is, oh yeah. That's like 37, 38, between 37 and 38. So this should easily drop to Pyro Ball, no problem. Let's just go for it. Let's not miss. I think that's the important part, is do not miss. Uh, I don't think Marcus wants to switch here because he got the Weakness Policy. Like what else is the Mew doing? And this should just be dead, beautiful. All right, now this does give Azu a free turn to come in. However, I do not believe Bandit Azumarill knocks me out with Jet. It does. <laughs> okay. So we do gotta be careful about that. So I think I'm good going into Yuxi because the Garchomp's not here. So I think I'm good going into Yuxi, getting up Reflect on the Azu if that's what comes in. So the Mew goes down while taking down the Treads with it, but I have Rocks up. So like who really won the exchange, right? Me, who is this? This is the Glow King. Okay. I wanna see how much Surf does from Slow King. 70% max, and how much does Pyro Ball do? 54, so am I better off going for two Pyro Balls or going for Swords Dance into Pyro Ball? Pyro Ball's probably better because if I Swords Dance, then he could go Azu after. So let's just Pyro Ball. Okay, so this is more Fizz Def. Here's the Sludge Wave. This is gonna do a good amount. Uh, even if he poisons me, it's not a big deal. I can just go into the Scrafty here. Like the Serp's definitely gonna end up becoming an issue if I let this get if I let this die, firstly. I'll go Yuxi, I think Yuxi's safe. It'll give me an opportunity to get up my Reflect. I can put up uh, a Reflect, I can go for Thunder Wave after if I really want to. Uh, this covers a lot of switches too, so it's it's really not that bad. The Mew's dead. The Glow King is sitting at about 50. So he is gonna switch. This is Addy the Azumarill. Uh, so I'm gonna get up my Reflect. Uh, should he go for a banded play rough? I should pull Yuxi up on the calc right away, actually. So choice band play rough would do anywhere from uh, 80 to 95 HP to me. So free, free reflect turn here. Let's see what uh, Marcus chooses to go for. It's gonna be a play rough. Does miss, unfortunately. That does suck. I can just go for T-Wave here. I do still wanna scout the Azu's damage as well. I wanna see what kind of damage it's doing. I don't see leftovers. I haven't seen an item yet, right? So I don't know if it's choiced. We are gonna get off the T-Wave and let's see how much this does. 354 down to 265. 
that does require choice band. So I'm going to U-turn. I think Primarina's safe. I'll take 45, <laughs> but he'll take helmet. Alternatively, I could foul play, but foul play does nothing to this thing because it's huge power in the way that that works. So I am just going to U-turn here. Um, I don't want to go Cinderace, as tempting as it looks. And my Scrafty is not yet Terra'd, so it's not a safe switch in here. So we will go Primarina. Here's Prim. There's the play rough. Does a lot. He's hurt by Rocky Helmet, so his Azu goes much lower. It's also paralyzed, so I'm guaranteed faster. And his Slow King has shown, shown to be a physical defensive set, right? So I'm gonna go for Calm Mind. It's about 15 minutes remaining in my time. I've gotten a lot of info on his team. I think Mence kind of just wins. I think I, I gotta weaken the Porygon. I gotta like knock it off or deal with it with Scrafty. I wanna see if his Porygon's like absolute min speed as well. That's an important thing. Cause analytic. So we're gonna go for the Calm Mind here. Majorge, oh. Okay. Now, if he didn't EV this correctly, we are actually slower than Porygon, which is good for analytic. I'm gonna go for a Moonblast here, I think. See what he does? We're faster. Okay, so analytic's gonna kick in. That's a lot of damage. Here's try attack. I figured this would come. Do not. All right, that's annoying. You probably recover here, or you switch into the Glow King. I think it's time. If this takes status, it's not the end of the world. So we are gonna swap in. So Prim is faster, which means I actually kind of expect Scrafty to be faster as well, unfortunately. So that really sucks. However, the Azu is banded, so I can just switch that in whenever. All right, we got in the Scrafty for free. How many turns of Reflect do I have left? Uh, two. This is a turn that I am going to take to bulk up. I can stay in regular. I do not have to Terra yet. I should also be faster than the Glow King. Let's see what comes in. So this thing is sitting at about... Okay, Serp comes in. Interesting. This thing's sitting at about 80. Azu's sitting at about 60. Serp came in on rocks and took rocks, so it's definitely at 87.5. I think I just go for knockoff. Curious to see how much this Leaf Storm does. I am very spit -off. I don't have confirmation if my Scrafty is actually faster than the uh, the Porygon. So here's the Leaf Storm. That does a lot. And we are going to knock this thing off, meaning if it was Scarfed, it is no longer Scarfed. It is Miracle Seed. I want to see how much Cinderace takes. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Scrafty is still really good. So I am going to go ahead and sack Primarina. And hopefully... He just clicks Leaf Storm or Giga Drain again. Please do not miss. Thank God. Okay. Good. This thing should be rocking Dragon Pulse. If I miss Pyro Ball, I lose. There's nothing I can do about that. So let's just go for it. So let's get Serp's HP down to 36. And now it's dead. Okay, so that's two Mons dead. I'm kind of worried about the Palm Up being Scarfed. Terra Electric. Double Shock. Because if you don't know, Terra Electric actually allows you to just spam Double Shock, which is very annoying. What's Lucas? Lucas is the Palmot. Now, as good as Cinderace looks into the rest of the team, and don't get me wrong, it is. It absolutely is. His Azu's at half, his Porygon is at about 60, and it doesn't seem to be defensive at all because it took a crap ton of damage from Moonblast. So I think if this is Scarfed, I get up a Reflect and I just win. He now does not have a solid breaker for my Terra Fairy Scrafty. Obviously, there's Glow King, but Glow King's slower. Here's the Wisp. We do connect. Fantastic. We are faster. Here's close combat. Is, does this take me out? No, it does not. There's a chance this thing is carrying Mach Punch. We know that it is not Scarfed now. Uh, now, Ace is actually still very good here. So I could conserve it and go to Yuxi. Or I can save Yuxi for after, get up a Reflect, and then do my thing, right? Uh, but I think that going Yuxi is correct. Because it might force Azu into locking an Aqua Jet, and that's an ideal Dragon Dance turn. So we'll switch out Cinderace, and we'll get in Yuxi. And here's the Double Shock. This should not do much at all. Very good. Still has not Terra'd, by the way. And now we are going to Reflect once again. We're not faster, obviously, but... Half his team left is physical, 
It's Palmot, which is now burned, and Azumarill, which is paralyzed. Here comes the Porygon, which I would also, I think, like to paralyze. Uh, alternatively, I could just U-turn into Scrafty. Obviously, he gets off a an analytic hit, so that's actually not the best. I think I might die to two. So I'm just going to T-Wave. Do I let this thing go down at this point? Maybe I let Ace go down. Well, if I just want to like guarantee that Scrafty is faster, I should just T-Wave this, right? Yeah, let's just T-Wave. Now that's paralyzed, Azu's paralyzed, uh, Palmot is, or is Azu paralyzed? I think Azu's paralyzed. Uh, and the uh, Palmot is burned. There's the try attack We know that's analytic, obviously. And now, now I think I just click foul play. Do I need Uxie anymore? I don't think so. I think I just foul play. And if he try attacks again, I'm pretty sure I die. I didn't see how, exactly how much that did. Obviously, this foul play is not going to do anything, but that's not the point. The point is not for the foul play to like really do damage. So let's pull up Porygon. He went down to 61. Or no, 56. 71 down to 56 from Yuxi's foul play. That doesn't make sense. Unless he went down by 10%. In which case, he's like no bulk, actually. So I think I take this as an opportunity to get back in my Scrafty. So long as he does not freeze this. I have a Reflect up, right? Reflect is up. Azu does not kill me. Slow King is going to die. I think I just click bulk up again. I don't know if I even need to. I can just bulk up in front of the Azu. I think I just knock. Yeah, just knock, play for the para. There's the knockoff. There's the Eevee Light gone. Full para, fantastic. We're gonna get our leftovers turn. And uh, I don't think Scrafty actually knocks this out with the next one, but I can rest in front of everything, dude. Yeah, I think I just, I could alternatively Terra Blast. If it's Ice Punch on the palm out, it is burned and I'm behind Reflect, but it could freeze me. I'm just trying to calculate everything here. No, I don't think I tear yet. I can bulk up. Just don't get some crazy status on me, please. It's 20%. You already got a freeze. Come on. Come on, Marcus. Burn is fine. All burn does is nullify uh, lefties. It also keeps me from knocking him out, though, <laughs> actually. However, I can rest which is exactly what I'm going to do. He's not going to switch out. He's never switching this out. I'm going to rest. I'm Shed Skin, and uh, hopefully the Shed Skin kicks in. While I'm asleep, he can't status me either, which is really nice. And judging by the... Uh, he also gets full parried that turn. Great. Uh, and there goes my Shed Skin. And that should be the game. Because now I knock. This should kill easily. Uh, we Terra Blast the Azu, we knock off the, the Glow King, and we Terra Blast the Palmot, and that's GG. I think Scrafty just wins it for us, guys. And this is what I was hoping would happen. Ah, oh, so good. Okay, so here comes the Azu. I'm pretty sure Azu drops to... I could also uh, bulk up again. I'm risking a crit then. Uh, if Azu doesn't die, I'm just going to cal calc max HP Azu with Choice Band um, versus Scrafty's Terra Blast... Fairy at plus one. 35 to 41. He's at 52. If I'm at plus two. 47 to 55. So if I Terra... I have a pretty good chance of knocking him out. If he's max HP. If he's anything but max HP, I like guaranteed knock him out. So yeah, I think I do just go for the Terra. Bulk up again. So here we go. Now we're plus two, plus two behind Reflect. And I think it's the Glow King that's paralyzed? Wait, was, was, this, was this Azu paralyzed? Did I miss something? Hold on a second. I think it was paralyzed. <laughs> Hold on. I'm faster than it anyway, but... There's the play rough. No crit. Fantastic. Any attack drop? Nope. That should be it. That should be the whole game. Yo, Scrafty coming through, man. Killing four mons. Let's go. All right. Terra Blast should kill. He should have some speed investment. He was paralyzed. There's the Terra Blast. This should kill. There we go. Azu goes down. Uh, Glow King should just go down to, um, to knock off. If it is Kolber, I think I'm still okay. 
because there is a burned Pomot as the last, and I still have my Cinderace, and it did not reveal Mock Punch, so I think we're okay. Uh, and this is only if the Glow King is uh, Colber and if it lives. However, the uh, Pomot comes in here. Is this thing now burned? Oh, it's Natural Cure. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Knock Off is the stronger move, right? Uh, it's a 50-50 with the Terra turn, right? I think I'm just better off Terra Blasting. Like, who cares? There's the Double Shock. Still no Terra for Marcus. I don't understand why he brought this thing and did not Terrastalize it. Doesn't make sense to me. Here's the Terra Blast. Is, um, the Berry, right? Is this gonna save him? It still drops. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, GG to my opponent. Uh, I wanna thank Marcus uh, from the bottom of my heart. I had COVID all week, guys, uh, and Marcus delayed this game, uh, and I really appreciate it from him. Thank you so much, uh, dude. You, you just, honestly, thank you uh, infinitely for, for postponing the game for me. Um, it really means a lot, so thank you. And uh, GG's, man. Uh, I mean, this is a great game. And uh, we're just going to click knockoff, and that should be all she wrote. GG's to my opponent. Go and check him out in the description. Please, guys, go and show Marcus some love. Marcus was nothing but an, an absolute sweetheart uh, for the last week or so for scheduling and everything. So uh, I really do thank him. And, uh, yeah, go and show him some love. Go and like his video. Watch his perspective. Really do go and do that. And go and check out all the other coaches, of course, uh, in the description as well. Go and see their games because theirs are probably up before mine, knowing my procrastinating ass. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, make sure to leave a like on our video. Subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time watching or otherwise. And I uh, will catch you guys later. See ya.